Hello everyone, welcome back. Let's do a quick tutorial about doors. I've been seeing some videos about it, but it seems overly complicated. Let's do a different way. Makes it a little bit more reusable. So this is one door blueprint. You have these that are unlocked automatically. Set these up to be locked and require a specific key. So I can pick up that key, come up to this door, but I need to find a next one for the next door and so on. So let me just grab that one. Show you that you gotta get the right key, which makes sense, right? Yeah. But jump back, open that door, and since I already got the third key, I didn't set up this one, but you get the gist. So let's jump in and take a look. See, this is all you'll need, just one door, one key, one key list. So, let's jump over to a clean project. This one. Alright, so I am here in a third person template. Brand new, haven't done anything to it. But with a wave of my magic mouse, it will be clean. Alright, it's all cleaned up, so let us go into our third person folder, into the blueprints. Gonna create a new folder called Doors. I'm going to open that up, and the first thing I want to create is under blueprints, we need an enumeration. This is going to be the key list. Every list, or every key in the level. So, key list underscore E. I'm going to open that up, and I'm going to add four. So, this first one is just going to be 001, 002, oh, that's a five, two. I know numbers, just not well. And the 03, 004. This can be anything you want. It can be yellow, blue, green, whatever. You can name them colors. You can name them after food. It doesn't matter. So I'm going to right click, create a blueprint class of an actor. And this is going to be the key card underscore BP. Now, one of the first things we want to do is we want to go into our third person blueprint character. I always say one of the first things you want to do, like it's the first thing we're doing, even if it's like halfway through the video. One of the next things we want to do is we want to go into our third person character, or whatever your player character is called, and add a variable, and this will be their key ring. Now, it will be of the type key list, that enumerator we just made, but one thing we want to do over here is we want to make that an array, since they're going to have more than one. And arrays are great at listing elements. Just like that. So you don't want any in your in your thing to begin with though. So now back in the doors, I'm gonna open up this key card. First thing I'm gonna add is a cube. And it's actually gonna be that chamfer cube, because I like it. I like the rounded edges. It just looks fancier. So I'm going to highlight the default scene root again, and I want to add a box. Nope. Probably sphere collision is better. And this will be its radius, interact radius, pickup radius, whatever you want to call it. Everything's, everything's fine. I'm just going to kind of scale this down a little bit. Just kind of into the shape of a little key card. So, whoop, whoop, there we go, that's looking decent, maybe a little bit wider, a little bit taller, and a little bit up. So, this little sphere thing is representing where the ground is going to be, so when you place it on the ground, this is how high up above that it will be. Uh, I don't want it sitting directly on the ground, I would like it up just a smidgen. So I'm going to move it up about 40 units. Now, back with the default scene route selected. The reason I'm doing it here is because I don't want these really parented to each other. They can be, I suppose. It just makes it harder to size that cube the way you want. <laughs> I'm going to add a point light. Just going to call it light, just because I want them to all look a little bit differently and have a little bit different glow. So I'm going to drag this way up, just above it. Compile that. Now I need to add a variable. And this is the key ID, what key this actually is. And it'll be of the type key list enumerator. This one will just be a singular because they'll each be one key. So I am going to make that a 
I'm going to click that little eye so that we can adjust each one individually outside of the blueprint. Now inside the construction script, I want to grab my cube. The reason I'm doing this is because I want to be able to set the material and uh, we'll also grab the light out so we can set its color. So off the construction script, that way we can see it as we're building, I'm going to set the material. Now it only has one element index. If your key or the mesh you're using has multiple, you'll need to do this for each element index that you want to do. But I'm just going to promote this to a variable. Key mat, key material. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drag out my light and I want to set the light color. Plug that in. I'm going to drag off and promote this to a variable called light, oop, I guess light color. Light color. And then after we compile that, you want to set this to a default of something. It doesn't matter what the default color is, we'll be able to change it, but you want to make sure it's set to something or else you'll look out here. You'll look out here and it won't have anything. So I'm just going to adjust some of the parameters of the light itself. We don't need it to be 5,000. I'm going to set its intensity to about 1,000 and its attenuation radius to about 200. That way it's not lighting up too much of an area. Uh, we also don't want it to cast any shadows. You know, attenuation radius can really go down a little bit. Oh, not that much. Maybe 100. All right. So now in the event graph, let's get rid of all of this. Highlight your pickup radius, scroll all the way down, and on component begin overlap, the second green arrow, let's click. Now on component begin overlap, we want to cast to whatever your player character is called in the templates. It's like BP third person character, that's the one I'm using, that's the one I'll do. So as that, we want to get the key ring. And we want to add a unique copy of the key we are trying to pick up, which is right here. So we'll just plug that in right there. And then we can destroy the actor, the key right here. So let's drag out our key card, take a look at it real quick. Oh, something I forgot to do. The key mat and the light color also need the eye ticked, otherwise you don't see any of the options out here. So now look, we can see, we can set which key we want it to be, we can set its key material. So for instance, we'll just make it a basic floor, hey look it changed. Uh, let's clear it out and it goes back to its blue thing, neat. Now we can also change the light color, we can't really see it, let me, let me turn down the lights. Okay, let's see. Turn that down to about one, skylight to about 0.5. So now we should be able to see as I change the color. Now we're at a rave. Hey, hey. Alright, I'm just going to leave it white for now. And that is the key done. So let's save real quick. I'm going to right click and create a new blueprint. And this is going to be our actor. This will be the door underscore BP. So I'm going to open that up real quick. Default scene root selected. I'm going to add a cube. This, will, this is what's going to represent my door. You can use a static mesh if and you like. I'm just going to use this. I'm going to drag one into my world. I'm going to grab out this little tab and I'm going to take a little look-see as I'm... Oh, no, I want to size this one. So, so the red is the front and back, it looks like. So I'm going to just size that to there. That way a little bit. Up. Now if you really want a really good way of uh, seeing how to size it, go into the starter content, into the architecture. And just drag out a door frame and that'll give you more of a, a, a reference. I'll just drag that right there. See, I made it way too tall. Look at that. So I'll just scale that down a little, a little bit more. There we go. 
and move it down into place. Doesn't have to be perfect, just has to be functional. Yeah, good enough. All right, compile that real quick. Bring this back up. And with the default scene root selected, let's add a box collision. Also called radius or whatever you want to call it. I'm just going to call it radius. Move it up to about here. And then I'm going to scale it up just to fit the door. So from the front, it looks like that. I want it to stick out just far enough. Oh, doesn't need to go up too high. I want it to stick out just far enough for the player to be able to walk up to, let's say, 50. So 50 by 50 by 90. That sounds about good. Okay. Now, in the event graph, off of begin play, let's grab out our cube real quick. And we want to get its relative location right here. And we can right click and promote this to a variable called start position. Since we're going to be using a timeline to affect it, this way we always have the one we need to come back to. Or the position that it, it's. You, you get it, you get it, you get it. All right. So now what we're going to do is find out if the door is even locked to begin with. So we're going to add a Boolean locked question mark. Click that little I. And we'll add another boolean called key needed. And this will be our key list enumerator. Click that little I. Compile that. And now what we can do is Let's go to our radius, and we'll add some events on component begin overlap and on component end overlap, which is the one right below the second one. Now let's set up the begin overlap first. So I'm going to move these down. From other actor, let's cast to whatever your player character is called. I always have made mine player character, so I get a little confused, but there we go. Third person character. Now. We're doing this just to make sure that it's the player walking into the box to begin with before we check to see if the door is even locked because if we don't want it to open just for anybody. So if it is the player walking in, then we want to find out is the door even locked. If it's not locked, then let's create a custom event called open door, which we will call right here. So you just right click custom event name it what you want and then right click and then type that same thing pops right up this is a reference just to whatever we fire off here so we can do that just like that so I'm gonna move this over here up here that's good and while we're at it let's just do our custom event close door also so alright so if the door is locked we need to see if our character has the key that's needed so from this third person character, let's get the key ring. Drag this up and see if it contains the item or the key needed. So we're checking the player's key ring to see if it contains the key needed. We'll do another branch right here. And if it does, then we will call our open door function And then we're going to set one more boolean called door open question mark. Make sure you update that to a boolean. And we will just set that to true right here at the end. Now if false, let's just do a print string. Did that say print text? Oh. Interesting. I only knew about print strings. Maybe that's new. Maybe I'm, I'm an observant. Who knows? So I'll just make it say, go find the key. All right, compile that real quick. Now on end overlap, we want to do the same basic thing and see if it's the character component that just un, un overlapped, stopped overlapping. Anyway, let's cast to the third person character, whatever your character's called. 
either one. Then we want to see if the door is open. We don't want to see if it's locked, but we want to see if the door is open. And if it is, then we will call our closed door function and then set that the door is no longer open. Now we don't have to wait till it's actually fully closed to do this because the way we're going to set up our little timeline up here, if they walk back in while it's still closing, it'll open right back up. So right up here, right at the open door, closed door thing, we are going to add a timeline. And this is going to be... Oh, I can't spell. It's going to be called position. And from open door, I'm going to connect this to play and close door to reverse. So a lot of times when you use timelines, you'd probably use play from start or reverse from end. But since these kind of are always firing, this one always fires from, you want it to pick up from where it's at. So basically this measures the inside of a, the timeline and then it'll play or reverse based on its position. Yeah, yeah, that's terrible explanation, but there we go. All right, so let's grab out our cube. And this is the reason you don't want any of this parented to each other. If the radius is parented to the cube, for instance, and then you move the cube like we're about to with that timeline, the radius will move with it, and then it'll get stuck in that weird loop of open, close, open, close, open, close. So you want to make sure nothing is parented to each other compile. So what we want to do from the cube is we want to set its relative location. Why did you bring out another cube? I already had one. We don't need you to get out of here. And we're going to update that cube's location. Drag your way over here. Now from this new location, we want to do a linear interpolation or a lerp vector. So we are going to grab that start position, plug it into A. Now from that start position, let's do a subtract, plug it into B, and I'm going to subtract about 225 units is what I found worked pretty well for my door. Uh, if your door is bigger or smaller, make adjustments as needed. Oh, another thing you can do is um, you can highlight things, like just then when my cords were messed up you can do that and press Q cleans it up real nice so 225 works for my beef now for the alpha we need to double click and open up this timeline I'm gonna set its length to one second add a new track a float track called speed it's not really for speed but it's for basically its position in the timeline but speed works speed 2 is pretty good so time on the first one is zero and value is zero because it starts directly at the beginning. This next one at the end of the timeline will have a value of one because floats move zero to one. It basically is like a percentage. So this is 100% and everything in between is lesser. I'm gonna box select both of these and this button right here will make them fit our screen. Right click one of the dots and you can set up your own kind of Interpolation, which is best like the smoothening, sm the smoothening, uh, the the transition in and out. So like when I set it to auto, see it kind of has that the little curve, the little hill. So now back in the event graph, we can hook this speed directly to there. Now let's check out our door. I'm going to right click and just hit play from here. And when I walk to the door, hey, it opened. And when I walk away, it did nothing. Why do you not open? Oh, it's because, okay. Off the false, because it wasn't a locked door, I forgot to set that the door was open. That's my bad. So now when I walk back, hi, it's opening and closing as we want it to. Now let's make it locked. So we'll say you are locked now and that you are key number one. So first thing, let's check and make sure. Hey, go find the key. All right, what about you? Come here. And now it's unlocked. So let's explore 
expand on that just a, or test it a little bit further. I'm gonna bring you up like that, and then one more time. So I want you to be key two. I want you to be key three needed. I'm gonna drag you over. You can alt. You can hold alt left alt on the keyboard and then click and drag something and it'll automatically make a duplicate like i just did so now we got key one right here i'm gonna move you over here so i don't forget about you now i'm gonna update you're gonna be key two and you're gonna be you're gonna have bricky look to you that looks awful but it works so that's what matters and you're gonna be red and now you are going to uh, be basic. You're gonna be key three, and your color is gonna be gre green. I like green. Uh, one thing you can do just to kind of fancify the keys a little bit if you wanted to is just add a rotating movement, and then I'm gonna set its rotation to like 30 so in the ro with the rotating movement component selected under rotating the rotation rate just set this to something that you want 180 is way too fast but 30 gets it that nice little doom style floating key look to it so go find the key I have key one now I can open you I gotta go find the key what about you oh you're the wrong key open up open says me all right and there you go that's how you can have one essentially one door for your entire level so where did i put it third person so yeah there you go you can have as many keys and doors and you can have some of them locked unlocked doesn't matter uh, each one changeable and all that jazz so if you like the video uh, do that like subscribe stuff or if you didn't like the video hit the dislike that's fine too <laughs> but I'm trying to eh, it doesn't matter. all right I'll see you on the next one bye mm -hmm.